Sir Hugh Carlton Green, the 15th of November 1910 to the 19th of February 1987, was a British journalist and television executive. He was Director General of the BBC from 1960 to 1969. After working for newspapers in the 1930s, Green spent most of his later career with the BBC, rising through the managerial ranks of overseas broadcasting and then news for the main domestic channels. As Director General he led a modernization of the BBC, increasing its audience in the face of competition from commercial television, which was launched in Britain in 1956 and had initially been more popular than the BBC. He encountered opposition from some politicians and activists opposed to his modernizing agenda, but under his leadership the BBC was recognized to be outperforming its commercial rival and was awarded a second television channel BBC2 by the British government and authorized to introduce color television to Britain. After retiring from the BBC, Green published several books, one in collaboration with his brother, the novelist Graham Green, and made television programs both for the BBC and its commercial rival. Topic: Life and career. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Early years. Green was born on the 15th of November 1910 in Berkhamsted, Hertfordshire, the youngest of four sons and the fifth of the six children of Charles Henry Green, headmaster of Berkhamsted School, and his wife and cousin Marion Raymond, the daughter of the Rev Carlton Green, vicar of Great Barford. Among the couple's other children were the future novelist Graham Greene and Raymond Greene, a doctor of medicine and a mountaineer. Greene was educated at Berkhamsted School and at Merton College, Oxford, where he obtained a second class in Classical Moderations and English .Before going to Merton, Greene had spent some time in Germany, and after graduating he returned there, beginning his career as a journalist. He worked in Munich for the British publications The Daily Herald and The New Statesman, and in 1934 he joined the Berlin office of The Daily Telegraph, becoming its chief correspondent in 1938. His biographer Colin Shaw writes that witnessing the rise of the Nazis deeply influenced Green for the rest of his life, "...teaching him to hate intolerance and the degradation of character to which the loss of freedom led." He was expelled from Germany in May 1939 in reprisal for the expulsion from London of a journalist and Nazi agent, Rudolf Rosel. The Daily Telegraph sent Green to Warsaw but his time there was brief. In September 1939 the Germans invaded Poland and he was forced to leave. As the war spread in Europe he reported from Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, the Netherlands, Belgium and finally France, returning to Britain in June 1940, narrowly escaping the German army's arrival in Paris. After a few months in the Royal Air Force as a pilot officer in intelligence he was released to join the BBC's German service, becoming its news editor. Throughout the war the BBC remained committed to impartial and accurate reporting to enemy-occupied territories. Topic: 1945 to 1960. At the end of the war the British government asked Green to return to Germany as controller of broadcasting in the British occupied zone. He established a peacetime radio service, Nordwestdeutsche Rundfunk, served as its first director general and gave it a charter on the lines of the BBC. In 1948 the station was handed over to the German authorities and Green returned to England. He was appointed head of the BBC's Eastern European service, where he led the efforts to counter Russian jamming of broadcasts. In 1950 he was again seconded for government service, this time as head of emergency information services for the Federation of Malaya, helping to combat the efforts of communist insurgents. Among his helpers was the future Prime Minister of Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew, who became a close friend. On his return to London, Green resumed his work at the BBC. First, in 1952, as assistant controller of overseas services, and then, in 1955, as controller. In 1956 Sir Norman Bottomley, Director of Administration and Deputy to the Director General, Sir Ian Jacob, retired. Green was appointed to succeed him. Shaw comments that this temporarily distanced him from any direct involvement with programs, but clearly identified him as the potential successor to Jacob, who was due to retire in 1959. After two years Green was appointed to a newly created post, Director of News and Current Affairs. 
it was established in the wake of television's rise to overtake radio as the dominant broadcasting medium, and Green's brief was, "...to secure overall coordination and editorial direction of topical output in both radio and television." In this role Green encountered resistance to modernization by key figures in the BBC News division, headed by Tahu Hole. The commercial independent television news ITN, launched in 1955 was strongly outperforming the BBC in innovation, flair and audience numbers. Jacob backed Green's modernizing approach, and moved Hole to be Director of Administration. Among the reforms introduced by Green was the abandonment of a restrictive and bureaucratic system for covering party politics. Before the 1959 general election he announced, "...we are going to cover the election, nationally and locally, like any other news story, on the basis of news value," putting the BBC on a similar basis to ITN and the press. <laughs> BBC Director General Green's appointment to succeed Jacob was announced in 1959. It was received with widespread approval by BBC staff, partly because Green was the first Director General to have risen through the ranks of BBC management, and partly because his transformation of news and current affairs coverage had impressed the program makers and made them feel valued as they had not felt previously. When he took over the top post Green abolished the position of Director of News and Current Affairs, and appointed himself Editor-in-Chief. In that capacity, Shaw writes, he remained, "...a working journalist capable, when the need arose, of dealing expeditiously with those editorial issues that were referred to him." Soon after Green's appointment the government set up a committee of inquiry into broadcasting, chaired by the industrialist Sir Harry Pilkington. Green pressed the BBC's case, arguing that the interests outside television of the commercial franchise holders constituted a conflict of loyalties with their public service obligations, and that the quality of programs from commercial television was greatly inferior to that of the BBC's. The committee's report was highly favourable to Green and the BBC, and despite pressure from the commercial television lobby the government awarded the BBC the proposed third channel and introduction of colour television. In a short history of the corporation, the BBC says of Green's tenure, "...he encouraged program makers to reflect the social changes and attitudes of the 60s." After the arrival of That Was the Week That Was in 1962, the British establishment would never be seen in the same light. Viewers enjoyed the portrayal of a new breed of gritty policemen in Z Cars 1962, wept at the plight of the homeless in the Wednesday play, Kathy Come Home 1966, and were riveted by Doctor Who 1963, Top of the Pops 1964, Horizon 1964, Tomorrow's World 1965, and Doctor Kildare, all attracting large audiences. Omnibus set a new standard for television arts programs, although under Green's leadership the BBC caught up with and overtook commercial television in popularity among the British public as a whole, there were dissenting voices. Harold Wilson, who became Prime Minister in 1964, was less tolerant than his predecessors of the BBC's satire and lack of deference, and Mary Whitehouse, a campaigner who described herself as an evangelical Christian and moral crusader, accused Green of being the Devil Incarnate. For allowing the broadcast of dramas with sexual content or bad language, Green could, and did, ignore White House, but he was vulnerable to Wilson's hostility. When the chairman of the BBC, Lord Normanbrick, died in 1967, Wilson appointed as the successor Lord Hill, hitherto chairman of the BBC's rival, the Independent Television Authority, a man whom Green held in contempt. If, as was suspected at the time, Wilson's motive was to provoke Green into resigning, the ploy nearly succeeded, but Green's advisers convinced him that if he resigned the whole board of management of the BBC would resign with him, leaving the corporation, "...at the mercy of its new master." As one colleague put it, Green and Hill established a working relationship that was uneasy but viable. Nonetheless, after a year Green began to look forward to retirement. After more than eight years in post he left in March 1969. To make it clear that the decision was his, rather than Hill's, the latter proposed that Green should become a member of the BBC's Board of Governors. He did so, and served for two years before resigning, feeling that his presence was inhibiting his successor. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Later years. In retirement Green made some programs for the BBC and also, causing some disapproval at the BBC, for ITV. He edited several collections of stories about the rivals of Sherlock Holmes, collaborated with his brother Graham on Victorian Villainies and became chairman of Bodley Head, his brother's publisher. His lifelong hatred of totalitarianism and dictatorship led him to be active in campaigning against the military junta that ruled Greece after the coup of 1967. After civilian rule was re-established, Green was advisor to the Greek government on the constitution of broadcasting. Green died from cancer in King Edward VII's Hospital, London, on the 19th of February 1987. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Personal life. Green was married four times. In October 1934, he married Helga Mary B. 1916, the daughter of Samuel Guinness, a banker, of London. They had two sons, the couple divorced in 1948. In September 1951, he married Elaine Chaplin b. 1920, the daughter of Louis Gilbert, an accountant, of New York. They had two sons, and divorced in 1969. In May 1970 Green married Else Newman 1910 a German actress whose stage name was Tajana Sayas. They had lived together in the late 1940s. She died in 1981, and in December 1984 he married Sarah Mary Manning Graham B. 1941, a script supervisor from Australia. There were no children of the third and fourth marriages. Honours. <laughs> <laughs> Green was appointed OBE in 1950 and knighted KCMG in 1964. He received honorary degrees from the University of East Anglia, the University of York and the Open University. The West German government awarded him the Grand Cross of the Order of Merit in 1977. In 1985 he received the Eduard Rhein Ring of Honor from the German Eduard Rhein Foundation for outstanding work related to the promotion of scientific research and of learning, the arts, and culture. Topic: <inaudible> Publications. The Spy's Bedside Book, ed. with Graham Greene, 1957. The Third Floor Front: A View of Broadcasting in the Sixties, 1969. The Rivals of Sherlock Holmes: Early Detective Stories, ed. 1970. Cosmopolitan Crimes: Foreign Rivals of Sherlock Holmes, ed. 1971. The Further Rivals of Sherlock Holmes, ed. 1973. The Crooked Counties, ed. 1973. The Pirate of the Round Pond and Other Strange Adventure Stories, ed. 1977. The American Rivals of Sherlock Holmes, 1979. Victorian Villainies, ed. with Graham Greene, 1984. Source: Who's Who. Topic: Notes, References, and Sources. Equals 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 notes. <laughs>